Hi everybody, and welcome to our review of J Jarv in Thief's album, The Boiler Room. Hot. This is the Classic Quest podcast, a show where we break down the classic albums throughout history, track by track, giving our thoughts and opinions mm -hmm. on every single track. Mm -hmm. This album, you may not know it, it may not be a classic, it may be. It's brought to us as a patron request from Mr. Ismail Kadam, so you mm -hmm. wanted us to talk about each and every song on Jarvin Thieves, The Boiler Room, so that's, that's what, what we're, we're going to do. My name is Holden Stefan Roy. I am your lady friend, Bonnie. And uh, today we're talking about Jarvin Thieves, The Boiler Room. It's going to be a little experience. We look forward to having a conversation with y'all in the comments. So along the way, if you feel like y'all got something to say, put those comments down. Yeah. Feel free to hit that like button, subscribe for more reviews. And on that note, before we get into it, quick little shout out to the patrons. Ismail Gadamsey, Chris Prado, Jonathan Barnes, uh, Linda Williams, and Scribble. They're dope, but we'll touch on that at the end. In the meantime, Bonnie, why don't you plug that keyword one more time to start the episode? <laughs> Well, one more time, we are doing Jarvan Thieves, The Boiler Room, which came out January 1st, uh, 2017. So not too long ago, um, you know, yeah. Definitely uh, one of the newer albums on the Classic Quest, yeah. but... But I feel like we've been doing newer albums. I feel like we need to have, like, a, a throwback soon, I feel sooner like, than later. Um, that's, that's true, but we'll the, see. the we'll last see few the episodes have definitely been requested <clears throat> episodes more so than ones true. we picked, but we shall go back in time soon. We will, we will. That's, that's to be fair, we did do Bad Means Evil, but still, mm -hmm. pe when you type in behind that suit reviews, at least on my YouTube, it, like, auto-adds Eminem um, as the yeah. most requested cool. search thing beyond that so we got to throw in m&m reviews for the people who c clearly want them anyway i'm really excited to be talking about jarv and thief so thief is a thief of baghdad the producer jarv is this rapper who this is the part of the show by the way where we contextualize our familiarity with the artist we've come to see that like it's only fair to let y'all know where we're at going into it now i know the name jarv because the the, the good sir who requested this and i are uh, friends on uh, facebook and i've seen him posting in various groups why don't people like jarv more that makes no sense to me upon which i uh did not investigate further on who jarv was because my life has been a little chaotic lately and um a lot of my life of music listening is related to album reviews Ismail then uh, requests this review, so I had to listen to Jarv. Yep. And I'm going to say off the jump, for those who don't go through it, the whole review, I get it now. Why aren't people listening to Jarv more? Like, mm -hmm. I listen to some of the stuff off of the newest album, the whatever, his his latest one. I listen to this project, um, and honestly, it's, it's like I'm excited to get in there and discuss these tracks because it's so imaginative and talented and whatnot so i feel you why why don't people yeah. care more about drive and thief I, I don't know but um otherwise this was a first for me personally never really heard of them before this yeah i mean yeah i've never heard of them so it's all new to me and then i kind of like the album cover a lot because it looks like somebody drew it with like a pencil and a marker yeah and scanned it up in there and it has this like black and white swirl pattern on the wall and like so it's kind of like trippy and like like it feels like a room that you'd be put in like if you know like in your like in like the cycle ward or something but like it trips you out it definitely does feel like you'd have anxiety in there but i also like how like low budget it looks yeah like almost like under the pressure of trying to make something you just whip this little cover together or but it also comes off kind of cooler than a lot of these like really well designed things because it has this like distinct feel to it like it has this like a hand touched this and created this like kind maybe of it was like an image it. from like a dream or something like that like you know it feels like unique you know like something that only like a person could think up of you know like just like a just like this random obscure idea of for like this room and i don't know it just looks kind of like cool and then with the title the boiler room you figure like the pressure and you know like kind of like life is like a boiler room is yeah. my first thoughts going into it and I, like when i think of like a boiler room i think of like a hot room a steamy like uh low i think of like the titanic and the boiler rooms were at mm. the bottom so um but also like the main energy for everything above so it's sort of interesting like that's kind of what i was thinking of 
Fair enough. Um, so there are going to be 21 tracks on this album to get through. We're likely doing this in two parts. We're going to get into it right now. So welcome to our album review. All right, Bonnie, what were your thoughts hearing this lovely, welcoming tune from Jarvan Thief? Well, like right away, like just, you know, we were listening to the songs, you know, in between. And like we were listening to it and like you just like get into the flow. Like it's so smooth and catchy and like... It just feels nice to listen to. Um, it kind of sounds old school a little bit. Like, it kind of has, like, that feeling to it. Um, and basically, it's, you know, him saying, you know, come on down to the boiler room. And, like, like I said, like, I just imagine, like, low and hot. Um, like, where, like, the heat is made and just, you know, but it affects everything. Um, that's just, like, my imagery. Um, and it sounds kind of like a song from like the 1950s, like mixed in a little bit. And it's, you know, it's short, it's under two minutes and it's just sort of like welcoming the listener to, you know, listening to like the album. And, um, it's cool. It's, it's nice. It's easy, easy to listen to. Um, I gave it a 4.25. So yeah, I'm instantly struck by how, how good, uh, Thief of Baghdad is because yeah. The the instrumental really yeah, has this groove to it that creates a degree of replayability. It's almost like this loop that just kind of sucks you in. It's kind of airy, head boppy. Um, it isn't like my go-to sound in terms of preference. So like off the jump, sometimes the sounds used in that kind of more jazzy inspired beats, like it takes a bit of me putting on my objectivity hat <laughs> to like look at the brilliance of it. But once I did that and I listened to it like the fifth time, because it's Usually that's what happens when I'm not necessarily accustomed to that. Like it's not in my preference. The first time I listen to it, I'm like, eh. But like the fifth or sixth time, I found my head just bopping and really just sucking in and appreciating the groove here. And it's just mm -hmm. like, come down to the boiler room, take a step into the boiler room, and you're just like, you feel it. Like, but it's if you think about the words of a boiler room, it implies like pressure, like you were saying. But what you're getting sonically, it's like the opposite. So it's almost like setting mm. you up for a little bit of what this album's gonna be like, this smooth and easy listening experience, but maybe from a lyrical perspective, you're supposed to get the pressure and the intensity and the heat of right. Jarv's rapping. So it's actually such a clever freaking title when you think about it from that point of view. And then it just kind of repeats for a while. I like the vibe to the rhythm and the sound. Nod to the kick, get down. Thief on the beat, making it pound. Live from the boiler room underground. So you can almost picture them in like a basement studio somewhere, just kind of working together, the heat in the situation. Um, they're vibing, they're making their music and whatnot. And I feel like it just does a good job of introducing the sound, the flow of this album. You know, it, you know, he's kind of introducing, he's gonna be writing it. He's, you know, in sync to the rhythms provided by Thief of like that and it really does a cool job i give it a 4.35 on 5 it's a it's a good intro yeah but i definitely think the album gets better the second we hit commercial all right bonnie tell the folk what you think about commercial um this one's interesting i think he's sort of like talking about commercials in general and like kind of like how like some people really do buy get bought into them and like kind of fall for it um, but at the same time, like, he's kind of, like, saying that, like, he's not a commercial and, like, he's not, like, a sellout and, like, not, like, about that, I think. Um, and, like, there's, like, the sample from, like, the Beastie Boys to start on, like, uh, and on, like, the hook, I guess. So, um, and on verse one, uh, I wanted to mention, uh, how much were the shoes that your parents bought you? Haven't worked a day in your life. It's so ironic. You're a tool. Um... I don't know. I just liked. I like the the lyrics. I like the way that it flows together, and I think that um, like that's it. It's more like like you just look like your parents bought you like your stuff, or like that you have somebody else that's doing that, and like you're just like so spoiled. So he's kind of talking about like that. I guess like maybe there's somebody in his life that he was just kind of like ah, there's such a spoiled brat or something. Um, and I liked uh, some parts of, well, I liked everything, but I'm like, I wanted to mention a few parts in uh, verse two. Um, Thief and I will break down the walls, bomb, and then burst through. Bother and hurt, vomit and purge on your purse, dude. You're acting like life is a big commercial. Again, like, I mean, I'm not doing it justice, but like the way he spits it is really cool. And um, I like, these are like random words that I feel like wouldn't necessarily always like go together, but like they just work the way he does it. And, um, like, they're just, like, 
coming down and they're like I don't know I just thought it was like fun and unique and um, you know acting like you know everything is so showy and like you need to show off like what brand you're wearing and everything has to be so like like that um, so everything uh, so everyone is trying to like sell things to get um, to get people to like their music and um, it basically sounds like we're sort of getting like his opinion um, on people in general and also like sort of like in like the music industry as well um, so I thought it was pretty cool and like you can kind of tell that like both of them like the way that they put together the music and the way that is you know that that um, jar of spits um, like you can tell that they're like fun and funny guys and that they're definitely inspired by the Beastie Boys so I give this a 4.35 um, yeah, so the hook is definitely great. It definitely sets up the context of the song. Everybody rapping like it's commercial, acting like life is a big commercial. It's a great sample and it does have a great energy. And I'm a big fan now of like when people do kind of use their influences and their sources, almost like what inspired them in the track. But I'm pretty sure this whole thing is going on about like the commercialization of hip hop in the sense that like a lot of people use their platform to sell and when the music comes through it feels like a sale like like here like you know like when migos and drake did the versace 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 <laughs> versace and you're like i mean sure it might be like a hype track to a lot of people i'm certain the people clicking on a jarvin thief review might not necessarily dig versace as a track but right so many people drop all this stuff and it's not even new though like his fashion thing is like way back like remember when we were like pointing out that like Nas was like wrapping guest jeans and stuff but it's like taking it to overdrive where it's almost like even like guys like Tech 9 have like these monster cans and videos and stuff and it's almost like the commercialization of everything that goes through it so then you have in the verse where he comes through like introducing the uncoordinated Bruce Lee jar of retard on tracks by Thief of Baghdad from New Zealand land when it, landing on branches like Leo and the Revenant so he's coming through hard he's hitting he's letting you know he's an imaginative rapper sets that up all three lines just to say I'm the shit mm -hmm. which I really enjoyed and I like that it's like a more relevant um like reference well but, that's it's I mean, gonna that's be dated in like 10 years yeah. but it's still like fresh to listen to now uh while rappers get branded i stay constantly hesitant standing on my own to dismantle the pansy thrown through and i like that because a lot of rappers are branded a lot of people wear it even guys like royce to five nine is sitting there rocking all these fancy ass brands and fashion labels and things like that and it really does kind of when you're sitting there and part of your image is a bunch of commercial brands it's like what is that does that influence things like how does that play into stuff like and i kind of get it because it's like at this point it almost feels like these are endorsements for it and it, it commercializes everything involved in it like for this podcast i would happily take sponsors and stuff because it's this <laughs> podcast and it's what it is i'm still going to spit my opinions but like for the more other endeavors in my life like i don't know it's stuff like i don't know if i would take that kind of things because it is a weird it's a weird idea what what happens when the brands control your art anyway um so like i kind of like where he's like standing on my own to dismantle a pansy thrown through paneling a fake when i'm hotter than rock and snow suits so it's like he's coming through like i can handle this on my own you know y'all need these endorsements you need this cash flow but me i'm able to make it based on the merits of my craft without having everybody kind of hold it down you know he's got the skills to to kind of gain that revenue you know but mm -hmm. i think one of my favorite parts is when he goes hotter than any dumb hoe with some large tits grab a motorboat <laughs> slap them not the tits the rappers bragging about their massive lack of talent and then it's kind of like cool. the, the, just the juxtaposition you know he brings up a bunch of like whore, hoes basically and then kind of like yeah some titties whatever and then when it goes to slap them, you think he means slap the titties. You know, he's talking about slapping the rappers who are basically these hoes that he's taking out. And then it's like, you know, Matt, who are you trying to impress? Have you a shred of virtue acting like life is a big commercial? So it's kind of like even with the part about the shoes and stuff. So if all you are is standing there with a bunch of clothes that are being provided to you by a label and it's just a bunch of fashiony shits and you're trying to sell this image and stuff, you just look like what you're describing is rich kid it's never worked for a day in his mm -hmm. life whereas if you come in and it's like it looks authentic it has a different feel to it not to say that royce to five nine hasn't put in his work to wear his fancy shit it was just thoughts as i was flowing and then i feel like the second verse just kind of follows through on that stuff you know 
Um, act now and we'll throw in an extra set for free. Call the number on your screen and buy my shitty CD. Grab your fire suits because this mixtape's fuego. Act now and you'll receive a stale everything bagel. And I think he's kind of commenting on the crazy lengths people go to get album sale numbers. Like consider like how many people bundle it with concert sales and, and shirts and everything really comes down to like marketing at the end of the day or I like when he goes, get your glow sticks ready, auto-tune coming at you. <laughs> Who's your new favorite rapper? And just like, unlike a lot of guys who I feel take shots at the industry, who they do it from this point of like seriously trying to improve, they're the fucking best, so it all comes off sad name is same. I feel like this is kind of fresh. Like he's laughing at everybody. Like yeah. to him, it's just this big joke. So he's flossing this airy talent. He's clearly rapping on point, fast, slow, erratic flows. Everything's changing. And he's just kind of going, he's touching into the core of the problem. Like y'all are just kind of fake because you're trying to sell things. So it's not just saying I'm better than you. It's I am hesitant to sell my soul for this. And you guys seem to be so okay for doing that. That's why I'll beat you because I'm more authentic. But like at that level, and I'm like, that's a fresh perspective on this. So I thought this track was fucking brilliant. I really enjoyed uh, listening to it. Yeah. I like the way this track is brought to you by Thief of Baghdad. Like that is just such an excellent use of the producer tag in this mm -hmm. thing. I'm giving this a 4.75. It's truly oh, enjoyable. Nice. Anyway, uh, let's talk about hot yoga in the park. When I first heard this track, I said, this is, Michael. This is what Macklemore is supposed to be like you know that like fun side of macklemore that was like really attractive to all the moms and like all of that like fun airy like like this is like the safest nicest happiest song ever it's just like so regular and like i could see how like if moms especially of the suburban variety heard this they would be like why can't all the rappers be making nice songs like this like yeah. hot yoga in the park i know what hot yoga is like you know what i mean like it kind of like it reminds me of <coughs> like that that macklemore track about going downtown and like the look on on your face when you listen to downtown it's that's what i picture <laughs> with this song and i'm like i realized in this moment I think this is what I was hoping Macklemore would be, is what Jarv is. Jarv is like the ultimate Macklemore. Anyway, what do you think All about right. this track? Um, I mean, I like the sound of this one. It definitely sounds cool. Um, and like, I don't know. I haven't heard anything quite like this. And I'm going to say that, I don't know, that he probably is... Um, a little bit inspired by the Cat Empire and for anybody that knows them. Um, and if you don't, it's just like fun kind of ska music. So um, they kind of sound like them a little bit to me. Um, and so I thought that was kind of interesting. And uh, he's basically just singing about being a chill guy and that he likes to, you know, that and people like to hang out with him and, you know, and just sort of like the shenanigans that they get up to and it doesn't have to be anything wild. And then, you know, he talks about like that he goes to a park and there are people, you know, ladies doing um, yoga there and, you know, just he kind of falls asleep against a tree, you know, looking at them and just like fantasizing and just being, you know, aroused by the, the beauty of women and the booty of women. And, um, <laughs> and, you know, then he dreams about, um, I think a girl from like his teenage years and, you know, basically, you know, his dream girl, um, essentially, and sort of just that he like doesn't necessarily like want to like grow up so much and um, I don't know I liked uh, some of uh, verse 3 here let me just like get it ready um, yeah so he talks about like the bootyful boot bootyful um, I'm a fool for you baby boo hello how do you do I am not the man but I will treat you like a woman number one and you will never be my number two. Um, you're definitely a divinity. Let me buy you dinner t to you. I promise I will always be true. So he just like gets like super like romantic and then like, you know, talks about like basically that, you know, she's still like wild in bed. And so it's still like a good time and stuff like that. Um, but just like the way that he flows, like, I mean, I can't do it any justice. Um, it, it definitely has like a cool flow and it's a fun, interesting topic. It's a little bit different. 
Um, and I definitely, I like this one. It's smooth, it's easy, and it's nice to listen to. So I gave it a 4.4 on 5. I mean, I listened to this and I thought this song, like, it taps into that, like, hit single territory mm-hmm. where, like, let's say the machine had thrown money on this. This has the potential to, like, own fucking Billboard. But simultaneously, I find the rapping in the verse is really great. Like, mm-hmm. just the way he comes in with that, like, it all comes together, man. It feels so perfect. Saturday, get, you know, it has, like, this singy tone to it. Yeah. So it's different from a lot of the more erratic flows that we get in a lot of the other places in this album and then it's almost like a a complete juxtaposition so in the first track you get commercial which kind of shows his disdain with like what everyone's doing in the industry and then with hot yoga it's almost like this mission statement for who he is and what his life's about and he's just like the kind of guy that wants to chill in the park you know like listening to a tribe called quest and beck you know he's got a beer can steady you know he's got a betty on my side backseat when i ride with the homies and it's just a bunch of you know you just picture him and his boys out there in the park having a bunch of tomfoolery adventures just trying to get laid and have a good time yep and then you know he falls asleep by the tree and whatnot but i really just enjoy like how the first two verses kind of like flow through with the singing this and like my favorite part is literally when he's like he's looking at this girl and he's like honey let's go and take a dip some bleach chair with bubble gun hips i get a grip jarve can't get this hard rocking gym shorts swimming with this broad and then it's like i'm like picturing the moments where i've been swimming with a girl i found particularly attractive and trying to resist the urge of boner because you can't hide that shit when you get out the water and then you don't want to stay submerged he doesn't want to like boil like burst his chances and i feel like in the second verse it's like he so in the first verse it's like he's dreaming about the girl and then he, he looks up and he sees her doing hot yoga and then she's interested and she wants to get a bite to eat and then in the third verse after that like break of i don't want to grow up no i don't want to get old you know he's all singy mm-hmm he just breaks into like the like the beat kind of drops down and it's like the flow goes something like uh yoga pant booty beautiful i'm a fool for you baby boo hello how do you do or no it's kind of like a, a smoother yeah. rhythm and it kind of like changes up the cadence and his voice drops down and it kind of ends up with him having a bunch of sex and he's extremely excited and he's like it's like it went down like this is like the whitest version of ice cubes it was a good day i've ever fucking heard it's like we chilled in the park you could picture him yep. being in some place where people go surfing sees the hot girl <laughs> he fucks her and then there's that outro where it's like oh hey it's quite all right out goes the day and in comes the night with the moonlight gleaming on the side of her butt i love life man ah shucks and it's like you can just picture it's this just guy so cute and, and innocent. like the pig like what's the the perfect state of happiness like you meet this crazy girl you go home you smashed it out you're sitting there the moonlight's bouncing off her butt and you're like life is perfect and then you're just like yep. that's the jar of way <laughs> and i thought that the beat is extremely well composed the way he, he this song is like fucking this is an earworm banger it's a five on five i think this oh, is wow. a track like i could show people that would get them to go and check out the rest of the album because i think it's just it's just built to be a fucking great single yep. and it also showcases his talent and range really well like it's a great chorus yeah, true. i don't know it's one of the more i don't i really liked it anyway the next song also showcases a lot of his versatility and imagination as we discuss flossing let's do all right bonnie i'm pretty sure you got this what's the song about well um this one is uh basically about going to the dentist and um yes <clears throat> yeah so that's what it is um <laughs> And it kind of sounds like like a 1970s like after school special type show. It kind of has like that like vibe to it. Like it sounds like elevator music, waiting room music. Yeah. Like it, it really. But like old, fit. but like. But like like you, dated, like particularly dated, like be, 70s or something. And why I think that works is because if you're sitting in the waiting room of the dentist, let's say maybe writing a rap soon because you're bored. This is probably the soundtrack that's playing in the dentist. Some old school, old timey shit just flowing on whatever safe radio it is, you know. That's why I really like that beat. Oh, I I didn't think about that, but yeah, I guess so. Um, And like, you know, you hear like he's like, you know, he's on the phone. He's making an appointment with like for, you know, for the dentist to go. Um, and then, you know, he's talking about the dentist and then he's in like the waiting room and he's feeling anxious. And then he gets like, you know, called in by like the nurse and everything. And, um, you know, just sort of 
describes the situation that he's in and just kind of describes like like the glasses that you have to put on uh, that he's like wear, wearing like while he's like sitting in the chair um, and like he's you know he looks out the window and he kind of just like describes what's around the, in the in the office and everything and like you know what happens you know the dentist scrapes off the plaque on his teeth and you know he doesn't like it very much and you know like like just like normal ass dentist stuff and then you know they find out he, he has a cavity and then so he's you know he sets up he, like the follow-ups for that and, like, and, and then like so his soon? next appointment yeah we gotta nip it in the bud and, and like, i'm oh, like yeah yeah and it's like just the regular mundaneness of the conversation you're mm-hmm. like Yep, yeah, that's exactly yeah. what being up a dentist is like. Yeah, but it's nice. It's smooth. Like, the beat is good. The flow is nice. And yet, yeah, it's about something so basic and common um, that, you know, it's just, like, relatable to to anything. And, like, it works with the title. Like, it makes sense. Um, so, I mean, I gave it a 4.4 on 5. It was, it's cute. I just, I like the, it starts off with a chorus, right? So, like, you don't know what he means at first, right? So, yeah. dead man buried in the basement. You're like, okay. But you don't realize that's, like, a metaphor for being at the dentist, perhaps. You know, like, lying in the mm-hmm. chair, passed out. Gold-plated spinners on my spaceships. So you're high, maybe, looking around, you know. Or the gold plates on his teeth. Yeah, or something, like, sh- sharper than the scaler that they scrape with. You're like, okay, wait, what? When you're at the dentist, then they steady hating, and you're like, wait a second, because it, it could be like whatever. The song's called Flossing. You think he's going to brag. And then it's like, man, what you talking about? My dentist is amazing. What, man, why are you talking about the dentist in the first place, man? And you're like, wait, no, that's he's talking about the dentist. Why is he talking about the dentist and in then the first like, place? So I just picture him sitting in the waiting room of some dentist being like, oh, fucking bored. Um, let's start writing a track. Uh, nobody ever wrote a track about going to the dentist before. Let's write a song about going to the dentist. And yeah, I'm like, do it. That's what's really, I think, cool about Jar's imagination in terms of what makes me want to just go listen to more of his music in general is because that is such an innovative song idea. Yeah. Do I really want to rock out to a track about going to the dentist very often? No, not really. But at the same time, I could also feel like, let's say I'm washing the dishes or whatever, and this song were to come on random... I'd, I'd be okay like i'm doing some mundane shit let's listen to a track about mundane shit you know yeah. like i feel like this type of rap has a purpose in life for those of us who live <laughs> normal boring lives and this is a very normal boring activity and i just think it's amazing how he pulled it off like he really elaborates entire voices like one thing about being in the dentist waiting room is that nostalgia to when you're young and playing for the toys so i happen to use the same dentist from when i'm a youth right Mm -hmm. not that i go to the dentist but let's pretend i did properly it would be that same i just started going to one um you know over the last couple of years and um she's great i love her and i never felt that way about any dentist before in my life so but um I just know cool. that there used to be all these toys there, so I would think back to the like the same those... wooden ones with those. Yeah, like, they're all in of that every stuff. It's like the standard dentist and toy. Then, but then he's like, with like the little you want to kind of go play with the toys, but he's like, but I'm no longer a to- boy docile, complacent, which is kind of what it is when you're a grown up. You're docile and you just sit there. What a nice place, cleanliness, organization. These are some adult things to think about while you're in the dentist. I don't like being a kid. Excluding the crooked plaques, making me insane shit. So that's like when you have OCD, because it that little crooked thing the one thing wrong in this room and then he just picks up a magazine until he's getting bored he's thinking about leaving he's nervous and then finally the nurse says nathan and comes in he gets his little setup in the chair the hook comes back through and he goes through a whole verse about being in the dentist chair and going through the whole dentist yep. thing you know and i'm like this is fucking hilarious and i Ultimately, I really enjoyed this track. I like the little ad lib. I like the fact that he does like the whole conversations with it is his voice. He's not even like trying to like hide it or anything. It's like he's just talking to himself, like just letting you know this is how the conversation went, you know, and it, the effect that it has is amazing. And I gave this track a 4.5 on 5. I never thought I would enjoy a song cuz like the beat is just airy and bouncy like I can't think of anything wrong. Like this is a cool standout innovative really interesting song about going to the dentist which yep. is i think the part where it's like weird because you're i'm so jazzed about a song about <laughs> going to the dentist but it it's cool 
I hope to hear more music that, like, I want to hear the grocery store trip song now. And I want to hear, like, the, I'm sure there's a lot of Gwen to the Gym songs, but you know what I'm saying? I want to hear more of this. Anyway, I'm going on at length. I get it. Y'all might be going, oh, Lord. I'm pretty sure this one has a music video. And it's so goofy to watch him like dance around this room and he like records it like just in this room and it's really fun to watch as he's like kind of being stoned and whatnot and I don't know, I enjoyed this track. I feel like the sample which is let's get go get stoned by the Amboy Dukes, which yeah. I'd never heard before. I thought it might have been Ray Charles. So I mean if you know Ray Charles and you don't know the Amboy Dukes, um uh, that's the sort of like feeling that you're kind of getting. But um, it's like, it just has this groovy, old-timey things. And it's such a great sample. Yeah. It's probably like this cost a lot less money than, say, Ray Charles. To... <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, and then it's just story time, right? So it's more in that, like, college boy, I woke up completely wrecked. Now, here's the thing. Like, I've woken up in the hospital on two occasions having <laughs> drank a little bit too much. So for me... Certain substances are, are fine, but um, alcohol is not my friend. So I got like this nostalgic, like, ah, to be young and absolutely fucking stupid with your recklessness mm. as I listen to this track, you know, and he's just so good. He's like, I woke up in a wreck on somebody's back deck. I stumbled down the street, beer and weed on my breath. What happened is the only question I could fathom asking as I stumbled who into vomit in the gas station bathroom. So he's just like, instantly you just picture him like getting off some porch like fucking wreck like i don't know where i am then going yep. to a bathroom and puking and just the, the level of detail like, i've got pictures of like my guy friends passed out exactly like that from those situations yep. like you know with dicks drawn on their faces and stuff because we're all assholes and um just fun fun things like that and then he <laughs> finds a condom wrapper and mm -hmm. recognizes he at least used a rubber. I guess somebody got laid. He's pretty happy. He can't figure out what's up. He can't remember stuff. He kind of like, you know, trying to figure it out. So it's almost like you watch The Hangover and it's like, I'm going to write my own version of this song. Yeah. Um, but it's cool, man. And then I like the way he ends his verse. He's like, I feel like shit, man. I feel so alone. I got high last night and I didn't go home. So never in my life have I got high and like didn't go home. But I've gotten drunk last night and woke up in a hospital. So we in the same boat you you know uh jar you and i we're like kindred spirits yeah um and then he's trying to work it back he figures out that sam the bartender is involved so he goes there and then they're like yo where'd you go after you left with that fat chick and he's like oh shit and then he calls up his friend and he's like you know uh i took your keys because you were too fucked up and you were trying to leave and he's like oh i was and then they finds out he bangs the fat chick and he proceeds to go outside and like dry heave in the streets being so disgusted he did that um which is whatever i mean there's nothing wrong with big chicks they tend to there's be a, it shouldn't make you throw up i'm just gonna say that like it's a good time that's all i'm trying to say um and then he gets his keys and then he goes home and it's just like in the last time he ends the verse with i got high last night and it's time to go home and it just it's such again like a regular innocuous like this is how half the dude remember that time i got high it's like one of those stories yeah. just in like song form and it's airy and it plays into the sample so well and the way the beat just kind of stops and is produced to fit every lyric properly like shit will like cut the beat if it like adds to the story element of what's going on in that particular line and i really i really think it's well produced yeah it's super fun to listen to it's clever um well, I can't relate personally to his story, I can relate with my own similar versions. And I'd love to hear your Olad stories down below in the comments if you have any that you're willing to oh, share. Oh, Lord. I don't so, know if I would share all, all of them, but I might share right. some of them. So, yeah, let us know. And I gave this a 4.5 on 5. To me, it was truly delightful. And it makes me even more impressed that, like, with it, I realized doing this review, it was going to take a while because every single song is going to bring something talkable to the table which yeah. to me makes for a better album review experience yeah i agree um you know something more to say um so i mean i liked it right away i thought it sounded cool um you know i i like ray charles so like that's why i it made me think of him um and like you know his like lady singers and stuff like that so it just sounds great 
Um, and then it kind of like transforms into like a 1970s style like weed song and like you know so it's clearly like a weed song based off of like the two you know samples that we get um so you know he's talking about that you know he's hung over from last night's party you know from beer weed sex like all that stuff he can't find his car which kind of reminds me of uh dude where's my car like if anybody remembers that movie um I just remember like the tattoos on each other on each other's backs that it was something ridiculous and I, I feel like I don't know if I would watch it again to figure that out but whatever um so he just kind of talks about what he remembers from last night and the fact that he met Sam the bartender so that made me think of Cheers um if anybody remembers that as well Lindell I feel like you will um and um you know it's just cute it was a good show um and the you know he talks about the girl that he slept with um shows up and she's like call me and like he has like no recollection of her um and like you know she's like you know basically he says like not good looking and then you know he talks to his friend and you know his friend kind of like confirms like this is what happened and this was who he was with or whatever and then yeah like you know he was sick which i think that's a bit much but um you know a woman is still a woman i'll just say that much and um that's it and it's just like a hangover story song and um it's just fun so i gave it a 4.35 on five all right perfect the next track we're going to be taking it back taking it back to the basics i like this song a lot I think it comes through and it does something a little bit different on this album than what we've seen so far. Mm -hmm. Its main point is to show that he can rap his fucking ass off, honestly. Yep. So you get this really bare beats kind of beat coming through, which sounds delightful to me. It is one of my favorite beats that we've come across on the project so far. Um, it just kind of strikes in. And then he hits up with this hook where he's like, I'm taking it back, taking it, or sorry, I'm taking it back, back to the basics. I'm taking it back, back to the basics. Taking it back, taking it back to the basics of the beat and a rap, but his MC's faking. And it's kind of like pointing out, like, with all the illustrious tricks and shit that you require to sound ill on a track, he's going to do something a little bit different here. And he's going to strip it all down, kind of take a simpler beat, and just use his, like, technique and his flows to impress and, and flare on this track. Where, you know, as a rapper, that's kind of your job is to use the rhythm and the flows and the wordplay and whatnot to, to kind of crush with it. So he kind of comes in with his verse he's like hold it huh hold it right there nowadays mcs just don't care talking about that bullshit y'all can never pull it his flow similar to my golden hair so he's got nice hair he really does he does have nice hair on his flow it's airy and it flows over the beat the way yep. his hair would flow in the wind <laughs> So he goes nowhere, goes sincere, grab the microphone, make you show them tears, rip it into the rhythm with a bit of competitive nature, and Nate gonna make it oh so clear. And basically, a lot of this verse is basically him kind of saying these rappers kind of suck a bit. What you gonna do? You know, what can you do to a guy like him? It's not like you can come dish Jarve in a conventional sense. You can talk about just shit on the mic, but how are you gonna attack him when he can come back at you and destroy you for being a fake person in general? And then it's like, I like when he's like, it's true, most rappers suck. Word to slug, number two, bad dog. So he's saying Slug from Atmosphere being one of the best to him. Uh, we saw Atmosphere, so Bonnie knows how cool Slug is. She yeah. got to see him in his dad bod rocket in his hoodie, showing <laughs> what it's all about, the hoodie life. Yep. Um, and I just enjoy the way he does this. Get a place for the feast, get a coat for the wetter, get away from the means and a hope for the cheddar, get away from me, kid. I don't want to be together. I'm taking the beat because I flow to it better. So it's just like, I got the skills. I don't want to affiliate with posers. I'm setting shit up. And I like how he flows on a little bit later with, might blow up, but it won't go pop. Where did De La Soul and all the real hip hop? So the answer is my question as to why won't Jarv get, like, get blowing up and get pop and all that. It's because he's not selling out. He's not going to play the game. He's going to go out there, rely on talent and authenticity to to kind of like get attention and buzz. And the problem with that in 2020 is that that's really hard. And there's a lot of people doing that now. Unfortunately, Jarvis is exceptionally talented. Don't get me wrong. But I believe that to understand maybe his brilliance or to even care requires a base level education in hip hop culture, which is becoming maybe less prevalent. So I think Jar is going to do fantastic in terms of having a fan base, but getting like picked up and getting to a high level, he's going to be yeah. like one of those dudes that like relies on YouTube and Patreon and has it completely. I'm, I'm assuming maybe as a label, if he has a label and I'm wrong, whatever, but I feel like on YouTube alone. Also, I would like to say there is no Wikipedia page for him as far as I could you know what I, what I found so 
Y'all should make one. Or like band camp or whatever. Like basically, dude can totally pull this off because he's gonna attract a bunch of guys. Or like, send him messages on like Twitter or something, and he like can't make, make, his, make, make his own Wikipedia or something. It's gotta I don't be know done. How it works. Um, but so dudes like Ismail, who are like, if you if Ismail is your fan, he is a passionate fan. That's all I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. I've seen more. That guy is like the most passionate music fan I think I've ever seen. So like that like you know like guys like him are going to advocate and get it to happen so look he made us do this this review here but for real i'm really impressed with him because when jarv then follows it up and goes no it won't flop and no it ain't ever gonna change all that tough talk sounding the same sick of that idiot bidding goodbye my advice it'd be to try a different lane and it feels like Jarv is trying a different lane, something more sincere and lyrical, true to his own form. But he's also creating something that, like, let's be real, this isn't going to become timeless, right? Like, I feel like one of the cool things that we've heard so far in the boiler room is outside of, like, maybe the Revenant line, everything's kind of, like, going to age really fucking well with his project. Like, he's really going into the core of what makes good, timeless music rather yeah, than just, just trying telling to... stories that are just sort of, like, in general or like he's flaring in a way where like you can listen to nowadays most MCs and shit and it's probably going to be true in 10 years still but like it's still got like this power to it like tempt me bitch I'm going to come to grips with a microphone might smite you despite the clones you came with the second the bass hit you came with the second the bass hit sick of the carbonated copies and lame kids so it's like he's pointing out yeah you can come back but look oh the bass hits you start rapping he's pointing out like formulaically within their songs the predictability of what they do and what makes him tired it's a little more than just saying y'all are whack it's like saying y'all are whack because you do this exact music trick you know like and then it's like you're trying to rap or get into fashion take your pick single out a million idiots in a video give me the visibility really willing to kill it showing up anybody really be kicking with a wicked flow and i like the fact that he's pointing out how everyone else is trying to be like a fashion icon or whatever and he's just trying to come through with that authentic shit and it, it goes on like that for a while it's a fast paced thing um he's very quick with it he makes it very interesting i i really enjoyed listening to this track i gave it a five on five i thought it was brilliant i thought the flow was incredible cool. i mean ismail i think jarv is brilliant you got me on board the jarv train that's all i'm trying to say yeah, like if you drop cool. some new album then it, it's a guarantee headspace review the next time jarv draws so i'm trying to say cool. five on five and if jarv you watch this and you want an interview with us dog you let me know <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I really like the beat, um, and, like, the overall sound on this one, so thank you, Thief. Um, I, I like the use because he's obviously going back to the basics, um, so I like the use of, like, the wooden fish instrument. I'm pretty sure that's what he's using, and, like, I feel like that's, like, a pretty basic instrument that, like, you learn in, like, kindergarten or something, um, or, like, you know, like, your, your first, like, music Mm. classes, like, that's kind of, you know, remember that, like, wooden fish, like, and so it makes that, like, that noise and it makes like kind of like a tap like I think it's also sort of like a drum sort of at the same or a percussion instrument um so yeah I mean so it's just like unique sound um and like he's basically better than other rappers is what he's saying and is you know kind of is like one of the greats and um and you know he wants to be like one of like the like the people that he idolizes, you know, like De La Soul and, you know, like people like that. Um, and, you know, his his flows are pretty great on this song. Um, and he goes, you know, he kind of shows like different um, ways that he can rap. He kind of goes at regular, normal rapping speed. And then he goes at like really, really quick um, at other times. So it's it's kind of like cool that he's able to show um, showcase that he can do kind of everything and um and so it's also like a warning for those kind of like wanting to like battle with him that he has all of the skills and he will bring it um so it's good it has a pretty sick flow and it's cool to listen to so i give it a 4.5 on 5 all right well sometime when the sun rise you got to do an album review yeah let's listen to sometime all right bonnie how do you feel about sometime this song just like feels like something that um, like you should put on when you're just like walking around the city and it's nice and sunny and you're just like out for like a nice stroll on like a Saturday like afternoon or something like that and you're just wandering around and it's like easy and cool and smooth and just like nice to listen to um and it's just like him like living a nice life and just like walking around and it's just like like that's what it makes me think of 
Um, and like, you know, that him and Thief like work together and like they make a six, you know, they make six songs and like this is a six song and like this is what they're making for you. And, um, you know, this is like the kind of thing that you would want to put on repeat basically just because it's so, it's so easy and enjoyable to listen to and it's got a nice beat, it's positive, it's, um, yeah, and like sort of like a reminder like as well that you'll get through like the like the hard times and you know anything that you're going through and that life will get better um, and yet yeah, sort of like a reminder too that you know we all are you know needing to you know keep growing and that we all have to keep getting better and just you know at the same time to take a moment to just enjoy life and just kind of um, have that like moment in the sun sort of like that's just what it makes me think of so um i think it's like pretty great um i like it it's very cool um and it made me thankful to ismail for um suggesting this um and you know thankful that we get to do these reviews and discover new music like that so um yeah i would never have heard this without izzy i will call you um <laughs> so 4.4 on five so this song is very happy. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't very like it. Nice. <laughs> and I was just like, this is a little boring. It makes me think of lovely day, lovely day. So like that, like, like that song from like the seventies that everybody like hates. I feel like, so, so I like, love it. It's kind of got this like sometime when the sunrise is gonna shine, and it just repeats that a lot. Like I get it, man. This song is meant for when you have a bad day and you need something easy and airy yeah, to listen it's to. Yeah, nice. But when I have a bad day, I throw on like "Fuck That Shit" by Three Six Mafia or punk music, and I feel much better. Okay. This is absolutely not the vibe and sound. Like the the effect it's going for is not what happens on me. Lyrically, it's lovely. Like it's all the same kind of stuff. Like it's just so mundane and you know kick it in the backyard or something back on the grass birds chirping and bees buzzing power to the few who do the do in the noon suns flowers and bloom the moods boost when the crew come and it's like <laughs> it's like i just had a lot of trouble getting into it like it's totally fine i felt like you were gonna like this song i listened to it and i'm like bonnie's gonna really like this like i and i will I not be shocked if like i'm hearing this coming out of her phone as she does dishes or is taking a shower in the future getting ready for her so day show. like for average normal or people this is very good like morning you know get ready for your day music you know it's very cool for what it's trying to be and i actually achieve it accomplishes the goals it sets out to do very well i just never ever personally want to listen to stuff that kind of has that go be happy vibe to it so it's hard for me to get into it but I next listen time you're miserable um you know after like a couple of like days of being trapped in here with me yeah, um, so we're we're not quarantined. I think in isolation. And is I just have a cold, um, so everybody chill. I, I no, just have but a regular cold. Quebec is basically shut down for the next couple of weeks, and it could be for the next weeks or months. Well, it's Canada just us in our room, except for when we go to the store to buy stuff. Just us and the cats. Um, but when I listen to something like this, it doesn't help. That's not the kind of vibe I want. But this is nice, like, because it is gonna do a lot of positivity for people, like. Aligning all that is out of place. I can already validate that I'm able to adjust and acclimate my eyesight, and you can too, no joke. You just got to keep them open. Don't allow the rain showers to get your favorite towel thrown in. It's so perfectly uplifting and good for everybody else, but that's not me. And I really like it for what it is. I think it's beautiful on this album. It's a good way to fit into the jar of way of being. I give it a 4.25 because it sounds nice, but I just had trouble caring. Okay, well, yeah, it's just kind of what it is. Maybe you should listen to the, the beat. beat. 92 point something something. This is another great one. I feel like my whole, I cared again instantly. I was sucked back into the album. Mm -hmm. What about you? Did you enjoy the beat? Yes, very much. Um, it definitely has like that, again, sort of like, we're, you know, we're sticking to it. And I like that that's kind of like the, the vibe that he's kind of like stuck with. Um, like this like 70, 70s feeling beat. Um, it definitely feels like that, like with the instruments and like just like the overall sound. Um, and, but his flow is so quick on this one. And it's like really cool on um, the way that it's kind of like this like smooth beat, but yet kind of like mixed in with like this like super quick um, rapping. 
and um, just, you know, he's basically saying, like, do what you can to, like, keep moving forward, um, and that's life, like, you know, but, like, kind of follow at your own rhythm of life, and, like, don't, you know, even if, like, the music is slow, do whatever you want, and, like, you know, I think that that's kind of, like, what he's showing as well, um, like, you don't have to stick with that rhythm, like, you can do your own thing, and um, he spits you know, really great on this one and, you know, super quick. Um, and it's pretty impressive. I like it. Um, and like, basically, you know, like you might as well dance, um, uh, because that's the only way to like set yourself free and just like have a good time and basically enjoy life. Um, even if shit sucks. And again, like this is like, you know, this is sort of like the theme for like, like the last couple of songs. Um, I found it to be pretty fantastic. Um, his flow is really, really great. Um, the message is easy because it sinks in um, because he raps it so much, but like in a really enjoyable way. Um, so I found it to just be great. I give this one a 4.8 on 5. I love this song because it kind of does two things. It both simultaneously flosses Jarve's amazing ability to yeah. ride the beat. And this is a, a, a trickier, faster, upbeat, up, upbeat kind of beat. I think it's the kind of beat where a lot of rappers will be like, no, nah, man, I can't even rap on that beat. And you may wonder, like, you may think that that's not a thing, but I have been involved in Montreal's local scene since 2012. And for a while i got free beats because all these beat makers would have these beats that rappers would just refuse to rap on like nobody wanted it and then they would just give them to me so i got like four or five like songs out there that were just because nobody else wanted it so they Sex didn't charge me and i thought that was really cool but yeah there's a lot of rappers that can't do it so i feel like the fact that he's just jumping on something that's a little more tricky requires a little more of an understanding of musicology is really dope but while he's rapping about his ability to rap he's also kind of talking about his ability to ride the beat of life and to understand like the kind of flow ebbs and flows and, and kind of coast through it so it's a pretty sick double entendre plus he manages <coughs> to like rock it with this super airy flow to it like rock the rhythm move your feet everybody getting loose to the boogity beat be free to keep your hi-hat and snare discreet slow faster flare take care of yourself don't push too hard don't get struck baby got to be smart this could all be about dancing this could all be about rapping this could all be about just living yep. and i like the way he, he kind of flows that um a little bit later on he's like and when the beat drop collapse into the vibe in a minute with the rhymes that i'm kicking lifestyle symbolized by the hi-hat ticking get it got it good understood what it gotta be not a comedy or an odyssey with a bundle of bottom feeding and so i like how he's kind of positioning himself as understanding what life needs to be it's not going to be a bunch of people coming after him it's going to be something it's more interesting it's not like uh and i appreciate his use of like literary genres to kind of exemplify the over Overall tone of what his journey is supposed to be something great something a hero's journey is what the odyssey is you know and i just uh i like it like a bit later on uh keep moving as one and the cycle don't cease be free to do you be free to be you do whatever you see fit kid breathe sigh of relief yeah breath of fresh keep it moving to the rhythm till you learn the steps so it's like go figure out who to be you are and you know what understanding there's that idea of keep it moving until you learn the steps that like instantly you're not gonna know how to be yourself it's gonna take some time to figure it out but if you keep practicing if you keep trying to understanding yourself and walk through those motions soon you'll be all cool and flowy looking like jarvis when he's dancing in that other music video mm -hmm. and i feel like as a person individually who's been really on a quest to try to understand how to move to my own rhythm per se um i appreciate where he's coming from because at first it's really clumsy and stuff and you don't really feel cool it's awkward to kind of embrace it new we'll say and it's worth acknowledging that it's not going to be easy or fast but that if you keep at it you'll get through it and then you know the beat comes through uh, sorry the hook comes through again and it's really nice it just flows over there's a second verse that he drops where it's like no end in sight i speak i write part of a cycle spark in the night found my rhythm when i was just a preteen gotta fuck the scene up and show my light my life is this my life is that a bit of blues a little bit of jazz a boom and a bat fact is doing it ruining cats fuming in fact so in there it's like he kind of recognizes that this is going to be an ongoing process a cycle that's going to go on until the end of his life it's never going to end he figured out who he wants to be for when he's young and he wants to pursue it which is again something i can relate to i can say nah i spent more than half my life writing trying to understand you know all of this 
and then he kind of lets it out he's a little bit of blues jazz boom bap rap you know he's coming through he's trying to take out other people with yep. it um he's grabbing hold of the rhythm and he never loses track so that's like the rhythm of life but also the rhythm of the beat and his flows and i really just love it i really just enjoy the overall feel that he brings to this i know there's a third verse i don't know that he's really bringing anything into the new table that i can comment on other than to say that it's ridiculously dope it's super interesting it kind of continues on with the imagery like uses a river and the flow to kind of show the wave and everything that's going through so he's super consistent and it's a really great song about like understanding yourself and just understanding what you're supposed to be in life but kind of done through a more realistic perspective like you don't listen to this and feel like Jarv saying it's gonna be easy you just feel yeah. like you can figure it out and have your own version of this yeah. too this own and confidence like, you know, there are going to be tough times like he's not saying that there aren't like he's acknowledging that there are and but like he's kind of saying like don't worry like keep your head up and you're gonna get through it and like you know we all go through it and so like you're gonna be fine kind of yeah so i gave this a 4.5 because i thought it was a really great and enjoyable track to listen to <laughs> and then uh guess what on the next song jarb does it again thief does it again is bad woman that's right so i feel like when you're writing a song about a woman or love or anything like that it is one of the most saturated topics out there so it's very rare that I, I hear songs that i find stand out in this topic like yes there's a lot that are authentic and a lot that are truly heartfelt but how often do you have something like this i think where mm -hmm. in the first verse he's like describing the story and keep in mind the whole song has like this more somber tone to it the beat still got this like jazzy feel but it's more somber everything's yeah. a little heavier than what we've been getting like we're getting it's like this would be like i don't know if you ever watched one tree hill but it would start with these black opening cards on the serious episodes to let you know that some real shit's going down instead of the normal no. fucking theme song okay anyway it's one of those episodes you know like serious stuff and it's like well, a month ago a hunt done approached after one of my shows he said she f uh, funk with the flow why thanks no problem your rhymes are fat nice to meet you i'm jasmine my friends call me jazz and then he kind of proceeds to go through this whole like conversation with her and then yeah, she gets a mixed drink he gets a beer and then she's like you want to disappear come back down to my place and he kind of goes back with her you know you know feeling in the chest i could never let it go i felt the skin and i struck with the thumb it's been a long time since i was in love might sound dumb but it might be true it took so long to finally find you uh we arrived at her place her eyes and face shine bright we're climbing the staircase to her room so he's painting this picture of like when you finally meet that woman or, or your partner or guy whatever and it's just in that moment you feel like it's the one and she's perfect and they get down in business and it's not like seeing the moonlight on the back of the boat having a good time fucking some random yoga pants girl this feels more like he met some siren intoxicant person who just seduced him fully and completely with her he called jazz and he's stunned and he's taking her and then you get that chorus where it's like you a bad woman i got it bad he just repeats it a bunch and he just kind of like sets this tone of obsession almost and then in the second verse time has moved along you know called you last night it was late i know felt the ring pulsating the pain in the dome as a lion bed with my eyes on the ceiling if you went home then where the hell did you go it's been a month i know it ain't that long <coughs> but i can't think straight and i can't write songs and i'm like yo i've actually kind of had these moments mm -hmm. where in my more single days you meet somebody who you think is truly divine in fact i met a girl named jazz one time and she was really gorgeous and interesting and like intoxicating and i i remember one time i like walking with my dude and we both ran into her and we had this whole like walk up the street peacocking trying to say well i'm better than he is you know like the whole way down like she was like and then she just ghosted and was dating some other guy that like i knew in the music scene kind of thing and it's like i'm not saying she had that big of an impact but i just thought it was funny that there was actually somebody named jazz where it was like a similar enough story in my past but um and it's just like the idea of finding somebody who you really just are that infatuated with and then they just disappear and you thought it was wonderful but evidently like it's not it wasn't reciprocated and then you're calling and you're, you're trying to get them and they don't respond or anything and you're just feeling like the anxiety of the rejection and it's whatever and it's like another line that i think really re resonated is like um the one time i wasn't trying to pound it and pass i'd been looking for love and thought i found it at last what i found was a frown and a flask i'm a mess feeling helpless where we connected the more i felt in the further i fell in and just the idea of like 
the worst is when you think it's something special because let's be real sometimes when you're single it's real easy to have people flowing through and you don't really care if you don't see them again if it is if it's convenient sure but then you meet those people where you let your guard down we'll say and and then they disappear and i think he just captures it so well and the depression and the anxiety that comes through in these two verses and this the whole flow of this song is such a beautiful package of that melancholy and then you have that voicemail at the end and he's leaving her like i know i've already called you a bunch but i just was missing you I just, and you know like he's calling her phone just to hear the voicemail thing mm -hmm. like we've all been there we've all done that nah, i don't know if all of us have but yeah all of us desperate lonely <laughs> see not all of us are cool like your lady friend bonnie here i'm not cool i've been there i've done that mm -hmm. i thought this song was special i thought it was really really cool and i give it a 4.75 on five yeah um, again, this one felt like very like 70s and kind of like made me feel like a, like a Western kind of like vibe to it or something. There was something about it. Um, but it's cool to sound and exactly it, of what it is. So he's telling us about this girl that he meets and then how she dragged him off and they had sex and he's like mind blown. Um, and this girl is like unreal and he's basically in love at first sight and like she's the one and he can't believe it. Like he's like, wow, like this girl is so incredible. Incredible. Um, and he's got it really bad for her but then like she's like you know blowing him off um, like later on like a few weeks later or something or like that week um, and like not answering his calls and he's just feeling so hurt and um, you know that she's still all that he can think about and um, you know he just felt like such a connection there um, and like he's just like so hung up on her now and um, exactly like you said like he calls her just to hear her voicemail and he's heartbroken and you know at the end he's kind of like talking uh, this this song like onto her voicemail like it's kind of like part of like his message to her um, and like but then like you know he calls her like a bad woman for like blowing him off um, but like you know, also bad that she like hooked him so hard and is driving her, you know, him mad and like wants him to call. And I just want to say, it, she is not a bad woman. Um, you know, if if this guy just you know let his fantasy and his feelings and everything just like become make her seem like she's so much more, and you know it was a one time thing in her mind, and she does isn't interested in anything further, that doesn't make her a bad person. I'm just saying. I have definitely been that bad woman before, um, just letting guys like be like, okay, yeah, I'm like, I just assumed it was a one night thing. I didn't, you know, think you'd be all in love with me and shit. Um, but you know, it happened more than once. And uh, I mean, I like the story. He sounds a little bit kind of desperate. Um, and but you know, sometimes a girl just wants to have a good one night stand, and that's it. Sorry, folks. Um, and it's interesting because it's sort of like a, a shoe is on the other foot situation. This isn't necessarily mm. something that we normally hear about. And it's nice to kind of have that sort of like, oh, well, like, I'm the sad guy. Like, this guy broke my heart and song from a guy. So it's nice to hear, like, that side of the story um, about him getting used and, um, you know, like a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, and just being left on the curb. So it's nice that um, this story exists. Um, go, you bad woman. Um, so I give this a 4.5 on 5. No, that's a really interesting point. I didn't consider it, right? Because the truth is, is as much as we as a society like to act like dudes can handle fuck buddies, mm -hmm. like if we really want to go down that path, more times than not, it's the, the guy, guy get, who gets catches hooked. feelings. He's the one who gets I'm jealous. Like, I know I'm great and all, but, but it's because like to chill. the second the girl starts getting interest from another guy, which is fully within the realms of fuck buddy realms, mm -hmm. that's when dudes start all of a sudden falling. And you hear this more often and then you hear about how the girl caught feelings in fuck buddy line anyway that's just my anecdotal i'm certain i, 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 I know I'm, I'm i know i'm so unique and everything but i mean you, I, you I, def are. I definitely feel like the guys fell a lot harder than i did yeah in most cases sometimes it goes <laughs> differently anyway moving along uh did you give your grade i sure did okay so let's talk about love and loss this is a weird song um, but once I realized what was happening in this song, I think it gets a little bit more interesting just cause it's so like normal, but kind of it's, this is like Bukowski or not Bukowski or like the guy who wrote on the road or one of those like fucking, oh. like, I don't remember uh. his name. Um, but like, like one of those more obscure poetry kind of guys. 
Cause like not John Kerouac, but uh, yeah, no, it is um, Kerouac. It is Jack Kerouac. Is it okay? Yeah. So they caught up in a mix of Jack an unknown city. Yeah, it all felt vaguely familiar, as though he'd been here in a past life or in a dream. He wanders aimless. Like it just instantly starts off with that airy kind of poetic language. Like we're gonna get this obscure simile or some bullshit. Um, and then he describes, like, set adrift across from the bus stops amongst traffic lights and cops. The sounds and lights hits his face like waves. He remains in phase navigating alleyways with a strange sense of recollection as he enters the great divide between two skyscrapers. And it's just like this, A, the rhyming is incredible. But the way he delivers it is a lot more spoken word poetry over kind of jazzy interlude feel is what the the music kind of brings. Like you almost expect like this snapping to start happening when this is going to be done. And then he ends up kind of, he's got his jacket and he walks into basically a dive bar and then he kind of like, you know, he sighs, closing his eyes, he really needs some sleep. And that's what you kind of picture. He's a lone guy, he goes in, orders a drink, passes out. Then he awakes, and he's noticing this girl next to him, two seats down, couldn't be any more than 22 at a New York bound, no one around, so it's just him and this girl, and then we start chit-chatting, he's like, hello, he says, what's your story? The chick looked over and said, I was on my way to Burma shape, I just stopped to get some rest. And then I love this little, like, line, not wanting to test the patience of this girl he just met, he looked back into the mirror, and when she looked over and said, you from around here? So it's like showing, like, an ethic, like, I want to be respectful, I don't want to push too much of this woman, I'm to look around not be invasive to let her kind of initiate the conversation and keep it hmm. going which is some pretty top level mac daddy game i'm just going to throw it out there but it's nice to just kind of have that because it feels like you're reading like a book almost as you're hearing him tell the story and then you from around here and now nah, it's my first day and then they end up having like this conversation where she drops this like line where it's like you know i know the feeling when you just got to do some soul searching it's so urgent you got a purge search urge for the worth in person i can assume as you get older but only worse because every day passing i can feel the erosion from the whirlwind gosh the way you rhyme that with the er sound which is not a common one that gets used in that purpose um it's just great but it's like the way this girl just says the perfect thing to him to kind of titillate his senses and get him there and then he's kind of taken back by the response and he's chit-chatting with the girl a little more he's kind of super into her it's like he's vibing completely she writes down uh some shit on a napkin like she's just the perfect she's a writer like him you just mm -hmm. feel like everything's so it's great connection she's like said nathan i know you know me and you know we'll meet again and then like that the girl was gone the man woke up pen in his palms this is the end of the third verse to his left a napkin he read it love and loss so all that's left is just the words on this napkin love and loss this girl's never been there then there's a little vocal interlude where he's talking to the bartender about how they like where's this girl i've been chit chatting with you know where's this chicky i want to kind of hit her up again and it's just kind of nowhere so really this whole song is like this dream state um, or drunken <laughs> stupor of him kind of reminiscing on this perfect person from his past or this vision of what's to be or whatever mm -hmm. and there's like nobody there and it's just kind of left and you're left with like the semblance of love like he was talking to the emotion of love and he's just left with the sense of loss and then the song just kind of like ends and it's like because you get the hint you look into a past that is shattered and cracked scattered years laughs tears and fears and no cash toe back shoelace anyway so you get the sense that like this is like a, a manifestation of something of another time when he had everything he wanted to it and i just thought it was like really like high arty you know like like not yep. like i don't know 4.5 on 5 i don't know how else to describe it um, yeah, this one, um, I felt like it was, um, it kind of starts off with like a, a more of like a spoken po poetry vibe. So like sort of like high art, I guess, like that, right? Um, and uh, in it, so like this guy is kind of talking about reading a book of poetry, so it kind of makes sense. It's sort of like Inception here. Um, and then he falls asleep and um, then he wakes up and everything is different. Um, and like he he took the bus in this into the city for the day and then you know he meets you know this girl um, you know I think he's just kind of feeling out of it and just kind of needs like a day off to like think and you know he's just kind of lost and he's just you know he just needs that moment um, and so then he meets this girl and you know he just thinks that you know instant connection and like feels like exactly the same way about life as he does and so he's just like wow this girl is just like me and um, 
you know, he's just kind of, like, taken aback by her, and she's like, you know, like, Nathan, like, you know me, um, and then she, like, disappears, um, you know, he, because he's basically, it's like, wow, I feel like I've known this girl my whole life, um, but she's just, like, a figment of his imagination, or somebody that he does know in real life, or somebody that he's, you know, like you were saying, like, hoping to know, or just, you know, he's, like, waiting for this girl to show up, essentially, um, or show up again, I don't know, and, um, so she's just basically in his dreams and, you know, he wakes up and then, like you said, you know, he, he talks to the bartender and he's just like, uh, you know, you've been sleeping and he's like, yeah, it's, it's all basically been in my dreams and that's it. So it's, um, another cool sounding song and an interesting topic and just kind of like interesting the way he puts it together, but it's not my favorite. Um, so I give this one a 4.3 on five. That's fair. And for Bonnie, that's still a high grade for something that's not her favorite. There you go. So this is where we're going to call it quits for the, the part one, mostly because there's still 11 tracks. And on a 21-track album, we've been putting the bigger half in part two is what we're saying. So we've done the first 10. Um, in my opinion, this has been delightful so far. Yeah, um, I agree. I really enjoyed what we've heard um i'll be honest i haven't fully finished reviewing the second half so i'm looking forward to getting through it and then we're getting this recorded as soon as we can for y'all and just i don't know this is this is quite delightful if you have not heard of jarv check out his music we all know you've got the time to do it now so just and, do it uh, if you're like us and your city is saying work from home until x and you close everything like all the bars just got closed down it's kind of weird these times that we're in but we definitely think you could maybe watch some behind that suit and share it with your friends and who knows maybe we'll do like a group review if you have interest in reviewing an album with us let us know in the comments if you watch to the end sure. we can go from there anyway special thanks sorry subscribe to the channel if you dug this like like the video if you did we yeah. care a lot about your comments and want to have chit chats with you so feel free to leave a comment if you do or respond ring the bell if you want i don't know if anybody does that but i'm, you know, I'm sure if you want a couple people told me they did but a uh, special thanks to the patrons ismail gadam c chris Prado, Jonathan Barnes, uh, Linda Williams, and Scribble. Mm -hmm. They're super dope. Support what we do. Get some album reviews out of us, like this very episode brought to you in full by Ismail Gadamsi. So that's super cool of him. Uh, and yeah, we have some pretty expensive ideas of what we're going to do over the next little while. So that helps, is all I'm trying to say. Like, yep. we're going to do it either way, but this helps, is all I'm trying to say. And uh, if you like it and you want to be part of the squad, we'll figure out ways to make it more interesting for you to join us like that. Well, there's a lot of possibilities and whatnot. I also make music. I got an album I'm working on now, a couple out on Spotify. You can check that out. Holden Stefan Roy, The Alternative Grind is my latest release. Uh, let me know what you think. Bonnie's going to start booktubing one day when she gets around to it. Live long and prosper, everybody. Bye, guys.